this becomes hard. This is a hot weather technique. This is very difficult to do in others. It's actually difficult to do when you're out of shape. Your hands, you get tired, you get blisters, and you've got only got a few shots at this. And Jen, this is why it's a, it's a, it's a lot more difficult, less variables. It's more simplistic, but it takes a little bit more practice. And there are various methods of sitting to do this. I'm gonna try and sit so you can all see. Some people like to actually carve the wrong end then. So once again, exactly the same principles, everything's just smaller. So now I've got a, an edge, an end that I'm gonna stick in a depression in the ground and now I don't have the mechanical advantage of the bow drill to do this. I have to use downward pressure with my hand. Now straight away I can feel that's pretty, pretty smooth. So I'm just going to make that a little bit rougher. And once you gain experience with these, you'll see what you need to do. And just to add to that, just to add a little bit of friction, I can get a little bit of sand or a bit of dust. I want to maximise the friction in that area. The ember produced with this is much, much smaller than what we get with the bow drill. Now, having a long bit of board is easy because you can put your leg on. I've got a short one, so I've actually disadvantaged myself here. What's that? You could. I prefer to sit. I've got more. So you've got smoke there. And already I've just seated that drill. Yes, to answer your question, I could do that. Depends on your flexibility. But then my leg arm gets in the road here. For me to use that method, I have to get down here. And I've done it with the short one. The longer you drill, this drill is actually too short. The longer it is, I've got more, more length to get more revolutions going down, because here, I have to change my technique. Once I get to the bottom, it's a very quick change to the top, all the way down, change. Because what I need to do is keep that pressure on the bow drill where we've got our left hand keeping that pressure. So it's keeping the amber, it's keeping the heat in there. As soon as you release your hands, this moves up a bit, that heat's lost. And that changeover needs to be very, very quick. Now that's the reason I sit down now with a longer drill, I'd probably choose to stand up or wood that's a bit harder, but needs a lot more downward pressure. I'm going to kneel up so I can get, I've got gravity, I've got my body weight. It depends on the wood. Grass tree requires much more light speed than this one. It depends on the piece. So once I've gone down to the bottom, I'm pressing down with my left hand and very quickly I'm changing because I want that, once that stops spinning, that's allowed to cool. So we went with the bow drill, you've got that continuous back and forth here. There's a split second where that um, stop, the, where that can cool. So that changeover needs to be as fast as possible. To get the idea of pressure, you can just do it between your hands and just practice like that. And all it is, is I'm doing that and at the same time, grabbing and pressing down. Depending on the wood, sometimes you work out what needs more speed, what needs less speed, some, some need more. Now, my hands, tender buffing helps here, but when you haven't done this for a while, you've got a few shots before you start blistering up, but as soon as you get hot spots, you need to stop, because once you get a blister, you're out for a couple of days. And trying to do this when you've got blisters on your hands, you see it in all force courses all the time. Guys, they've got a week to make friction fire in any way they can after being shown, and some guys, it takes guys two weeks and they fail the entire course if they don't get it because we fire, you can't boil your water, you can't cook your food, you can't keep warm, all of those things. But guys get blistered up and then it takes a long time. And out in the bush, you don't want to be relying on this method. So this is, um, and you want to really protect your fire. So in exactly the same method that David just did, I'm going to get my saw. Now, because we're dealing with smaller, smaller things here, smaller, um, notches I'm just going to use a smaller saw I can use my gut and I can cut in exactly the same way so everything with this method is miniature I'm just doing it this with this saw just to save time at this point you guys are going to be doing it with your knives
So I'm gonna widen that. I want that to be nice and smooth because I don't want the catch at all. Now, once again, there's so many personal preferences for the shapes of a notch. I personally like to widen that notch at the bottom to allow oxygen in. don't want anything inhibiting the formation of that ember. So don't be rough, it needs to be big enough. If your hole's too small, the ember will catch in the hole and not fall to the bottom. Okay, that notch is a little bit too big. It's gone a little bit too far in there, but that's okay, I know that'll still work. Is that like a 45, what they did? Yeah, that didn't turn out 45. Generally, if they say an eighth of pi, an eighth of a circle is generally what you're after. And, um, but something that's too small, something a little bit too large will work better than something that's too small. Okay, now I'm ready to make fire. So I have my tinder bundle now in cold, wet weather. And in the cold over there at Dave's school in Ohio, it's cold humidity and it is bloody hard to, to make a fire over. In Australia, generally up north particularly, you just have to look at up Darwin, you just look at, the, look at the tinder and it turns to fire. It's pretty easy. And in Australia, things are dry, but when it's wet, this comes out in the last minute and the cold ground itself can suck the energy from it. We'll, we'll talk about this over there but before you make fire, we're just doing the ignition source today. You need to have your fire platform and your different levels of kindling all prepared ahead of time. You don't get fire and then suddenly build it. That all needs to be done first and um, we'll talk about that when we go over there. So I'm ready to make fire now. I'm going to use the same amber pan that Dave used. I could dry that out in the sun, put that in a warm place, in the air, try and get a flat bit of flat ground. Get a nice flat base. And I'm ready to make fire exactly the same. I'm gonna warm the setup, just put a little bit of sand in there. Just a little bit of friction. Starting off nice and slow. It's hard to talk once I get going. Gradually increasing downward pressure. very gently. Now I've got dark stuff and the light stuff, if you've got a very, that's quite, here's a good example of pithy. And you're gonna get this a lot. And what happens here, greater heat, centrifugal force is to the outside. So a softer wood won't burn on the inside. So you could actually cut the center out of your, same with the bow jewel, cut the center of that, because that's not where the speed is. The speeds on the outside so that's why that's made that shape I'm gonna let that grow in the cold climate I might put that up shield it from the wind and it's quite funny well it's not funny for the participants but um, when they see up in Darwin everyone's sweating and hot and it's the end of the week and they've tried for several times I've seen people finally get an ember and a bead of sweat's just gone straight down there <laughs> <laughs> and that's psychology, survival, will to live and positive mental attitude because you see these things, just people lose it. We find it funny, but, that's, but when you're in there in that situation. So once again, my tinder bundle's prepared ahead of time. I've got a bit of time on that. You don't want to rush that. If you rush to put that in the tinder bundle, it's still a, pow a powder, it hasn't congealed enough and you're just going to blow the powder through. So you, you have to be careful not to do that too soon. I'm 
I'm using a P, an embouchure. Being a trumpet player helps. I wants to go up and you put that on your awaiting platform of parallel sticks and then you would small sticks match stick size pencil size then your bigger sticks above and if you haven't got that preparation all that's wasted and if the weather changes you're stuffed so you need to have that prepared ahead of time now that is what happened on the last course Dave with the hand drill Everyone, simplicity, it looks a lot easier. And everyone says, right, I'm gonna do hand drill. But within a couple of hours, everyone's got blisters and things like that. But as I said, it's very important when you're creating these sets to do as exactly as we say, make it as perfect as possible, because you think, oh, that'll do. That, that lack of attention to detail will end up not working for you. Then you have to make the whole set again. And that's common everywhere so try to make it as perfect as you can using the principles that we talk about and you've given yourself the best chance of success so that there are many other fire methods it's fire plow there's everyone seen uh, uh, what is it cast away with Tom Hanks and he's got the fire plow that's another method that's actually even simpler and that's going with the grain now that's that's probably the hardest method because you have to stop in the same place come back at cool, stop in the same place. If you go too far, you mess your whole tinder bundle up or your amber up, and that's really hard. Tom Hanks had a, a really good help in that movie. He had a special wood, and that was Hollywood. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't have got that one. <laughs> and on that note, we'll end that.